Bonjour and welcome to a new video of Paris Top Tips. What should I do? Today's adventure takes us to the laid back streets of Saint Germain des Prés in Paris. We'll soak up the artistic vibes at Café de Flore, explore the Abbey of Saint Germain des Prés, and cap it off with a visit to the awesome Musée d'Orsay. So, join us for a chill stroll, discover the cool side of the neighborhood, and let's wrap things up with some art at the end. Welcome to the chill side of Paris. Bienvenue à Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Get your virtual walking shoes on because I've got 20 must-see spots lined up in this extended Saint-Germain-des-Prés neighborhood. I've dropped this map link in the description so you won't miss a bit. Let's explore together the coolest corners of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. We start our stroll today at Metro Station Odeon on Line 4. This is Boulevard Saint-Germain, the dividing line of the neighborhood we're exploring today, creating a distinct blend of vibes on either side. Take a moment to admire the statue of Danton, one of the most influential French revolutionary figures, and then double back to the charming Cour du Commerce Saint-André. Restaurants and tea rooms line this cobbled street, located on the site of the moats of the enclosure of King Philip August. Here on the left is Café Procope, the oldest café of Paris in continuous operation. It was opened in 1686. Rue Saint-André-des-Arts is lined up with closed shops, art galleries and cafes. We are now heading towards the Pont des Arts, on the Seine River. This building is the Lycée Fénelon the first high school for girls in Paris in 1883. Of course, today it's a mixed institution. This is an example of a typical building courtyard in this neighborhood. If you want to purchase the finest teas, head to Mariage Frère. Now, let's take Rue Christine. Relais Christine is one of the 103 five-star hotels in Paris. It's a great hotel if you can afford it in such a calm and pleasant neighborhood. Opposite the hotel is one of the oldest cinemas in Paris. Passage Dauphine is one of these beautiful pedestrian streets I had you know about in my video on the 12 secret streets to be discovered in the City of Light. Link on the top right.
Rue Mazarine will lead us towards the Institut de France, of which you can see the dome. We arrive towards the Seine. On the other side of the river, the tip of the Ile de la Cité, with the equestrian statue of Henry IV, and the beautiful Pont Neuf. If you have watched my video about the Ile de la Cité neighborhood, you know that this willow hides the best picnic spot in Paris. If you're not in a hurry, take the time to rummage through the displays of these famous second-hand booksellers of the Sandbanks. will soon be there. But before, the Institut de France is a French learned society grouping five academies, including the Académie Française. Linking the Institut de France on the Louvre, the pedestrian Pont des Arts was the first metal bridge built in Paris in 1804. It offers superb views of the Pont Neuf and the Ile de la Cité upstream, and the Louvre and the Grand Palais far away downstream. But beware, it's also a famous spot for scammers and pickpockets. Now let's go to the Jardin du Luxembourg via the Odeon Theatre. At the start of Rue de Seine, the very pretty Gabriel Pierney Square, where you can sit on stone books. Rue de Seine is famous in Paris for its dozens of art galleries. Also on Rue de Seine, Cosy, one of my favorite sandwich makers in the whole of Paris. I'll have a Tom Dooley. Really excellent, the turkey ham is to die for.
But if you want a more formal meal, there are many excellent restaurants in the surroundings. And then you can finish with a yummy Italian ice cream at Grom. We're back on Boulevard Saint-Germain. And now, let's take the Rue de l'Odéon. Here's another great Italian ice cream maker, Il Gelato del Marchese, that is featured in my 8 best ice cream makers in Paris video. The Théâtre de l'Odéon is one of France's six national theatres. On the Place de l'Odéon, built before the French Revolution, the beautiful buildings with concave facades contribute to the harmony of this semicircular square. We are approaching the Luxembourg Garden. French formal garden, in opposition to English gardens, its harmonious lines and perspectives, as well as its shaded paths, will charm you. On the large octagonal pool, children sell sailboats by pushing them with a stick. Offering a lovely perspective on the Panthéon, the Jardin du Luxembourg actually belongs to the French Senate, which sits in the Palais du Luxembourg that you can see here. We are now on the street side of the Senate, and we are heading towards the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. In the distance, the Saint-Sulpice Church. Let's go and visit it. It's certainly not the prettiest church in Paris, but it's one of the largest. This is a very rare gnomon, a device that uses the sunlight passing through a small round opening in the southern stained glass window of the transept to form a small light disc on the brass meridian. If it crosses the meridian on the obelisk, it's noon on winter solstice. If it crosses the meridian on the recess plate, it's an equinox. This street, Rue Princesse, is famous for its rugby-oriented pubs. Here has been renovated what used to be the old covered market of Saint-Germain. 
Now there's here an upmarket food shop. But behind it, there are still a few stalls in what remains of the old covered market. If you want to create your own sandwich, you will find everything that you need here. This building is one of Paris University restaurant. And once again, we are back on Boulevard Saint-Germain. We'll stay on it for a while this time. First, let's get past the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. We'll get back to it later. Here, in less than 100 meters on the boulevard, we have three of the most famous restaurants or cafes in Paris. First, Les Deux Magots, a famous spot where you could sit close to Sartre or Hemingway. Then the Café de Flore, reference place for all writers in Paris, Apollinaire, Camus, Prévert were customers. Just opposite, a Louis Vuitton boutique where you will queue much less than on the Champs-Élysées. And finally, across the boulevard, Brasserie Lip is classified as a historical monument for its decor. It is here that we find the quintessence of the Saint-Germain-des-Prés neighborhood. But what gives its name to the district is the Church of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, formerly an abbey created in the 6th century. The bell tower, as well as a good part of the interior of the church, date from the 11th century. Just below the bell tower, a nice little garden where people like to sit on the benches. We start now the final part of our stroll, which will lead us to the Musée d'Orsay. Behind the church, there are streets with magnificent buildings. This is the Catholic University of Paris. And this is the very cute Place Furstenberg. En route to the museum, you may want to stop at La Durée and treat yourself with some delicious macarons. Here is the Hotel du Danube. For me, the best value for money in the district. I made a video about this place if you're interested. Just click on the top right. Right next to the hotel, this building doesn't look like much. However, it's fundamental to the history of the United States. The Treaty of Paris, signed here in 1783 by representatives of King George III and Benjamin Franklin and John Adams, officially ended the American Revolutionary War and acknowledged the 13 colonies as an independent and sovereign nation. Let's turn here to get back to the Seine. We are now just opposite the Louvre. The Musée d'Orsay is just a few steps away. The 
These images were shot in April, on a clear blue sky day. Since 1986, the imposing nave of the former Orsay train station has served as the setting for this museum, whose superb collections of sculptures and paintings cover the periods from 1848 to 1914, the Louvre being dedicated to what came before. The entry cost is 16 euro, and it's free if you're under 18 or under 26 and member of the EU. It took only two years to build this amazing building in 1900 to be the train station serving the entire southwest of France. But after World War II, it became too small for the longer trains, so it declined and was finally transformed in a museum in the 80s. Let's grab a map. It covers less than one century of art, so it is clearly not as huge as the Louvre. Consider staying here around two hours to visit it. A replica of the Statue of Liberty, but this one was built by Bartholdi himself. This film shows in two minutes the creation and transformation of the Orsay station into a museum. There are superb works of art everywhere, but if you are in a hurry, the fifth level is where the most masterpieces can be found. In room 6 on this floor is a very famous painting by Gustave Courbet, L'Origine du Monde, that I just can't show here on YouTube. Here is a sectional plan of the Paris Opera. We are now on the fifth level. This place with the clock on its view of Paris is a famous Instagram spot. People line up to take a picture. Back to paintings with this Déjeuner sur l'herbe from Edouard Manet. This luncheon on the grass by Claude Monet was painted in response to the work of the same title by Edouard Manet, which is located just opposite in this room of the museum. Dance is a subject that marks Degas' career. He is in awe of these dancers who shine on the stage. He has done many dancers' paintings.
This sun breaking through the fog at the London Parliament House is one of my favorite Monet's painting. It's difficult to get in front of what is perhaps my favorite painting ever, The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. It's 6 p.m., the museum is closing. I had just the time I needed to discover all the beauties of the Musée d'Orsay. To finish our stroll, we just have to go to the Solferino metro station on line 12. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this stroll throughout the Saint-Germain-des-Prés neighborhood. If so, make sure to watch the other videos in this Discovering Paris neighborhood series. Until my next video, I wish you all the best.